Yeah. Eddie, what happened there? I was driving on medication. They told me not to drive on medication until it had worn off. Apparently, it hadn't worn off enough yet. <laughs> and I crashed into the my daughter's neighbor's fence. He was pretty cool about it, though. I came by the next day and admitted it, guilt. So now I've got to pay for it. No kidding? Have we really? Time's good when you have them flies. Yeah, it makes me think of Herb. You know, it really does. This is a place that he built a long, long time ago. He had a vision for this barn to build skis in way before we started using it. And uh, he was a pretty good guy. He had a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of passion for the sport. And he really liked the people that he worked with and the skiers and wakeboarders. And you know, I guess we've come a long ways. I think some of my favorite ski stories were uh, going to uh, some of the pro tour, some of the pro tours with some of the skis that we've been working on and skiing with Chris Sullivan and, uh, and uh, uh, Wade Cox and seeing those guys do well on skis that we had made and they had had input on and we had all worked on together. That was uh, pretty cool back in the days to be able to do that. I remember Wade, uh, when he skied on, the, the very first time he skied on a uh, CDX in a tournament. It had BTR graphics on it and he beat Andy Mapple. He ran a couple at 41 off and that was back in the day and so that was really good skiing and that kind of stuff to me was very gratifying to be able to you know be involved in the process of uh, building a ski and then seeing our team skiers do well on it. That was really pretty cool. Yeah it didn't seem like we were very serious about it right at first until Herb started uh, believing more in himself and believing that hey, he really could come back and, and, and uh, make a decent living making skis and, and that he was still on top of things and that he could, uh, he could still really ski really well too because he was a darn good skier. He came out and skied with us at this other little lake down the road from here and he had the best score of that day and he hadn't skied, he hadn't skied in seven years at that time. And he got several, uh, several buoys, I think uh, three or three and a half at 32 off at, uh, no, I'm sorry, 35 off, and that was at 34 miles an hour, which he hadn't skied at yet. He, uh, he had been a 36 mile an hour skier. So that, that was pretty cool. The first ski that I liked that, that Herb built was the, uh, <clears throat> it was a Mach 1 EP. It was called the Mach 1 EP, and uh, Roger Teeter, who later started EP skis, he would uh, uh, fiberglass those for Herb. Herb made the cores, shaped the cores, uh, and um, uh, Roger would uh, bond a top onto them and, and uh, wet lay up uh, fiberglass on the bottom, just like you're building a boat. We still have one of them in here in the, in the, uh, uh, on the Wall of Fame. But see, I, that's what I was skiing on in the regionals in 74, but I, I had those skis, I know, as early as 71, because I remember he gave me a stack of them to take down to Mexico with me. I went down to Mexico with uh, three friends of mine and had my dad's old Tahiti. We had two cars, a 57 Chevy station wagon and a 56 Buick station wagon. We went down there and camped and we were going to set up a slalom course in the Sea of Cortez there, but it was always too rough. So we finally took a, a few uh, free ski rides in the ocean, basically, and, uh, and ate oysters and drank a lot of beer and had fun nonetheless. But he gave me a bunch of skis to fool around with, and I did a whole bunch of filing on the bevels and stuff. Those bevels were really round, and those old Mach 1s, really round. <clears throat> Are you a good girl? Hmm? Did you go for a ride? One uh, crazy uh, radar lake memory was uh, uh, there was a guy up here named Crazy Ray that uh, was kind of an overseer. And uh, I guess you could call him a lake guard, but uh, I came up uh, to his side of the lake. He was sleeping and, and, and staying in a, a little in a canopy that he had in the back of the truck, and he had a vicious dog. And he also had a, a, a gun. He had a couple of guns. And I remember I say, hey, Ray, hey, Ray, yep. And then I heard a click, click, and uh, it was the sound of an automatic weapon being cocked. And then I said, hey, Ray, it's only me, Eddie. Dude, don't shoot. And so that was pretty exciting. <laughs>
but probably the some of the funnest stuff though was skiing some of the tournaments that were up here and, and just skiing around with Herb because uh, he used to ski here a lot and he was a darn good skier too and uh, and then when Wade would come to town and Chris Sullivan and any of the other skiers that were skiing for us back then it was pretty cool good times yeah well once you get in the gate this place is the same as it was in 1972 or 3 when it was finished. It's no difference. The only difference is when you look back at some of the pictures that were taken during the regionals in 74, the trees around the lake were a lot smaller. So the trees are bigger now and there are houses outside of the, of the compound here, but um, you can't see them and you don't hear them. So it really hasn't changed in that respect. The boats are newer and they're better and uh, the skis are a lot better than they used to be. We don't have to work so hard to make them turn anymore and they're easier on the body. First memory of Radar Lake has got to be uh, coming out here when we had been skiing at this little lake down below here. It used to be called Holiday Lake. And it was, uh, that property was owned by the uh, person that Herb bought this property from, from to build O'Brien Lake is what it was called for at that time. And coming out here and seeing a big mound of dirt that he, he had knocked the trees off of, and he said he was going to build a lake here. He got the, got the idea from uh, Dr. Jack Horton, and he thought he was going to build one up here, everybody's good, and he certainly did. And I actually helped him work, I worked on the, uh, on the fences for a while, and uh, I got to ski for free finally when he got the lake filled up. It was pretty cool. Herb was out here all the time and he was a big time skier back then. And we had the 74 regionals here and I skied in and that's when he and I were both skiing 36 miles an hour and he, he kicked my butt. He always did, but not by much. And uh, he ended up on the he ended up on the shore in the gravel. He uh, popped a handle at, uh, I don't know, I think it was something like uh, 32 off or something like that and uh, spun out and ended up on shore. Uh, but he didn't get hurt and he, and he got a re-ride. I don't know how the hell he got that. But.